Steve Goddard rolling you home, a KZZP. Would you believe the gentleman that's going to be at Dooley's tonight is with us, Del Shannon. Thanks for dropping by. Steve, it's a pleasure. You've had a busy, busy schedule. Were you in Tucson last night? Uh, yeah, tonight we're here, and then tomorrow we have off. Then we go to, uh, we open in, at the country club in uh, Los Angeles tomorrow night. And then I go to Canada for three days with uh, Burton Cummings. He has a TV special up there. Then I fly directly to San Francisco. I mean, it's just insane as usual. Rock and roll is... Are you you're either have... doing something or you're not doing anything in rock and roll. Are you going to have Christmas off? Yes, I always have. <laughs> in my whole life, I've always had Christmas off. Okay, so at least... And I get... get very bored. No, I do not. I love Christmas. I think it's great. Listen, uh, we've gotten some calls this afternoon about this, and you'll be the man to confirm it. There are rumors that... Uh, a certain Tom Petty will be with you tonight at Dooley's. Can you, can you tell Petty, us anything Tom about that? Is he, does that name sound does familiar? Does he sing? Or what? <laughs> I think, he plays, Petty? I think yeah. he plays a little guitar. Yeah, he plays a little guitar. And then, uh, I don't know, it was rumored, too. I just got in, so I just heard it from sort of you, or uh, I heard it from uh, Roger outside. Uh, and then someone said, get another extra amp. That must mean something. Now, I don't know <laughs> if, if that means Petty's coming in. Or what, you know? I mean, we usually don't just get an extra amp for somebody unless you somebody's only, coming in. You can only play one at a time. Uh, that's right. And uh, so uh, it is rumored that he is coming in. And uh, if he, I'll tell you, uh, it would be great to have him come in because uh, Tom is, is a really amazing. You're guy. the greatest non-committal committal I've ever well, heard. I don't, I, I don't want Tom to come and say, hey, man, what are you doing? <laughs> Telling stories like that. Then he don't show up. I'm really embarrassed. <laughs> then you're in trouble. Maybe he's doing this to get even for some evil thing we did in the studio <laughs> together or something. Let me talk about one thing. I want to talk about the new record, but uh, there, there's, an, uh, there's something. But I think he is coming in, yeah, and it'll be great, you know, to, to see him. Okay. There is uh, something that a lot of people don't know about you, and that you were the first artist to ever have a John Lennon Paul McCartney record at right. the American charts. Yeah. It was like six, seven months before the Beatles hit and that was for me to you. Yeah, I have stolen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you have taken well, I accused John Lennon of stealing uh, the falsetto. I said, you know, I had to have an excuse to do it, right? As if he needed to steal anything, really, John Lennon. But he, w we were working a show together at the Prince Albert Hall in London, which is a giant hall over there in 63 I think it was and from me to you I think was about number two or three or number one they had about three hits in a row at the time so I said to John John I'm going he was just going on stage actually and the Beatles are already on except John and he was just going up the stairs and he said I said John I want to do from me to you I'm gonna cover that record on you because you put some falsetto in it trying to make up a great excuse right and he said oh, that'd be great mate you know but he got up halfway up the stairs and he turned around and he said don't do that and then he walked on stage and that's really the last i heard i think brian epstein didn't want anybody to cover anything that they did or any do anything he wanted to invade america but they did a good enough job with me doing it or without me covering their record really <laughs> see well let's hear it right now that's for me to you from adele shannon the we're gonna first, do that tonight first, i think are you gonna do that yeah tonight? oh yeah. that'd be fun 104 KZZP, we're talking with uh, Del Shannon from me to you. That should evoke a couple of memories or two. Let's talk about the new uh, album. The new album? The new album, and a big hit single. And it's the first yeah. uh, first chart record you've had in a while, Sea of Love, the old... I Netflix. haven't seen a bullet in so long that it amazes me, <laughs> and a bullet means that it's and doing your, very well indeed. And, uh, and your name beside it. Yeah, I don't know uh, what to say. It was just great working with Tom Petty and, uh, and the Heartbreakers. Uh, I had some of my own band on it. I have my own band with me now. Uh, the Heartbreakers aren't coming in. Uh, I'm too expensive to use on the road. Too, too I mean, many amps wow. on stage. Too many amps. I mean, they got to have drivers just for their amps. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Gee. And I don't mean screwdrivers. <laughs> uh, it was... Uh, I don't know, I waited a long time. You know, Dan, my manager, has been with me for years, and we just waited, I think, for the right time. I had to get my head straight about four years ago. You know, I had to just... Just chain around, because I was working with Jeff Lynn for a while, too, uh, of ELO, and he said to me, you know, you don't have a direction. And then I started hearing, listening to other people, like artists like Neil Sedaka was having some hits, you know, and he said, because he, he's a writer, and so am I, I write songs, and, and I wasn't writing very much, you know, it's about seven years ago. And Neil, I, I heard Neil on, on, an, uh, on, an, on an airlines that was flying through, they were doing an interview with him, and he said, he got back into writing by discipline. 
and I hate discipline, you know, it means I got to do something and I don't want to do it, you know. But I finally sat down and I started out writing five minutes a day again, you know, I had to get back into a groove. But the way I write today is a lot different than I used to. I used to set eight to ten hours a day, and if, whether it came out or not, bad or good, and if it was bad, I'd really be depressed. So today I just write when I feel like it, and that's what I did with this album. I just, uh, when Tom said, uh, I was actually going to go to Nashville and record country. Every six years I go to, I even went to Nashville, I think, seven years ago. I was uh, thinking, well, because my old, the old historian, because uh, uh, if you were a country lover, love country music, and you're in the rock and roll business, they always said, you can always go country if nothing ain't going on much in the rock and roll. So I continued, I went to Nashville about seven years ago, and everyone, six big companies on it, turned me flat down, which is more depressing. So then I said, well, I'm going to give Nashville another shot, you know, and uh, because disco was around and somebody called me and said, the last time I wanted to do disco is when they said, you ought to do runaway disco. And I said, oh, man, are you kidding? Forget it, you know. So I said, everything is so disco, which is okay. You know, a lot of disco records, I think Donna, Donna Summers is a fantastic talent. It's not, it's just, I'm not a disco uh, singer, nor am I an opera singer. I just sing what I sing. So uh, the thing is with Petty, when he sat down with me uh, in Dan's office there in Hollywood, he said, Dale, what are you doing going down to Nashville? And I said, well, I'm going to cut some country. He said, country? You can go country when you're 60 years old, man. You're a rocker. you got to rock. And when he said that, that's all I really needed to hear. So I went back and started writing rock songs. And the reason the album took so long is because uh, Tom went into a uh, legal thing. And then... Uh, when he got that settled, the torpedoes took off, and he went on a nine-month tour. Then I went to Australia. I came back, and he went to Australia. I mean, it was just getting together. It took about 30 days, really, to cut the album, but two and a half years for it to get completed. Then when it got completed, uh, you know, it's such an insane story. The record company I was going to go with, RSO, closed its doors. So then we ended up on Network uh, Electra. So I'm very happy with the label. And it all worked out just, just really great, you know. But working with Tom was... Uh, well, like working with Jeff Lynne was great, too, but I just wasn't ready. I just absolutely wasn't ready. And I, I was ready. Like I say now, I'm ready. Timing's everything. If uh, I'm ready, if they're ready. <laughs> okay. Listen, let's listen to See You Love right now. Uh, great. 104 KZZP and uh, See You Love from Del Shannon. Gosh, that guy sounds familiar. Yeah, that was a Phil Phillips record. Of, I heard that in first in 59. Is that it? I was around, hanging around a bottomless lake. <laughs> I swear, and I looked out at the bottom of this lake where they said people go down and you never find them. It's just stories, probably. I lived in a strange area in my life, and, uh, but I believed all those stories. And then I heard the Sea of Love, and I fell out of my car. Glad, thank God I didn't fall in that lake. And uh, it was really, uh, I always loved that song. And then I started working in clubs uh, right after that, and I started doing a Sea of Love, and I was doing Handyman, which I re-recorded later on. But See You Love, I recorded this song in uh, 77 with Steve Smith of Island Records when I was with Island for not very long, a couple years or something. And uh, we went to Muscle, Sh Muscle Shoals in Alabama, and we took the tape to England to try to finish it. We took it back to L.A., and uh, we tried everything. We put the kitchen sink on that record, and it never made it. So when Dan, my manager, called up and he said, why don't you play, Tom, the Sea of Love? And I said, no, I am not going to do the Sea of Love because we've tried and tried and I, nobody can get that guitar sound I wanted on it. Well, he said, play it for Tom. And I play it for Tom. And Petty says, man, that's a gas. Let's do that. Because Tom don't say many words, you know. He just says, it's a gas, let's do it. So we did it, and I swear, you know, in about three hours, uh, the record was done. You was know? it pretty simple for you to do? Very simple because it was cut simple. We didn't put background vocals in it. We didn't put any much of anything. Just basic drum, bass, guitar, organ, and uh, that's it. And Ben played some great stuff on it of the Heartbreakers, you know. He plays that great instrumental on some weird machine he found someplace. Worse than my old uh, organ player who played all the synthesizer stuff on Runaway and Hats Off to Larry and stuff. So it just worked out great, you know. Uh, the way Sea of Love sound sounds like I wanted it to sound in 77, just couldn't get it. It just didn't happen. That's great. Just I wasn't basic, ready. basic rock and roll. Oh, yeah. Gosh, and we'll hear some of that tonight at Dooley's. Oh, yeah, we'll hear that. Big show with Dell and an extra amplifier on the stage. Yeah, if we'll somebody wants to come play. Mystery plug singer in, will yeah. be there, maybe. What the heck? But listen, it's good to have you. And thanks for dropping by. Hey, Steve, it's a pleasure. Really appreciate the time. All the best to Tempe. Is that the way you pronounce Tempe. it? Tempe. 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 We're going to make I a native out of you. Tempe. <laughs>